In this video, you will create the detail page of the news drill down. So back to ColdFusion Builder, you see that the news.cfm page is already open. So let's take a quick look at what we need to achieve in this video. So I will open here the news folder of the project and that folder contains four HTML files that are some remains of the old static version of the site. So let's open one of those files and run it in the browser. All right, you see what we need to do. We need to output here the title of the news. Of course, we need to output also the content of the news in the main area of the page. And here we have some metadata about the news. We have the news date and we have also the user that has published that news. So back to Cofusion Builder, remember that in our database we have the news table. And in the news table you will find the title, the creation date and the content of the news. But if I show the content of that table, you see that in the news table the author of the news, the user that has published that news, is only a number. And that number refers to some data that is in the users table. If I take a look at the users table, remember that user one is Joe Admin and that is the guy that has published that news. So I will need to create a query that takes some data from the news table. It takes the title, the creation date and the content from the news table. And then it takes the first name and the last name from the users table. And the link between those two tables, the relationship between those two tables is based on the news author field on the table news side of the relationship and on the user ID field on the user side of the relationship. So let's return to ColdFusion Builder, close that HTML file. And here, just after the main div opens here, I will create a CF if tag like that to check if the news ID parameter is passed in the URL. So to do so, I will use the is defined function of ColdFusion. And is defined takes one argument, which is a string, so that's why I need those quotes. And the argument is the name of the variable that I want to check. So the variable I want to check if it is defined or not is url.newsid. It has to be the same as the name of the parameter that we create here in the URL. Now, if that parameter exists, it means that, let's create a comment here means that I need to output a single news. That's the detail page of the drill down. If that parameter does not exist, I need a CFLs tag to output, to query the database for all the news and then to output the table with all the news. And of course, after the table, I need to close my CF if. There we go. So that's the master page. So here I will need to create a CF query that will query the HD Street data source and let's give that query a name. I will name it RS Single News and of course now I need to close that CF query. Now what do I need to select? I need to select some data from the news table and from the news table I need the news content, then a comma to separate from the second field. Also from the news table, I need the news title. And finally, still in the news table, I need the news creation date. Now, I also need two pieces of data from the users table. So let's add a comma. And this time I will select here the users table to retrieve the first name of the user. And again, in the users table, a second piece of information, which is the user last name. Now, as you might expect, the from clause will be a little more complicated than what we used to. So we take some data from the news table, but we also take some data from the users table. And what we need here, we need to join the table by what is called an inner join. It means that we will take data when the data exists in both tables. So if the data exists only on the users table and not on the news table, we won't select it. So we won't select users that did not 
publish any news. All right, so we need an inner join between the news table and the users table. And then we also need to specify what field we rely on on each side of the relationship to create that relationship. So I create that inner join on the news side of the relationship. It needs to take care of the news author and that needs to be equal on the user side of the relationship to the user ID. So this is how you take data from several tables and this is how also you join those tables together. All right, now I need to filter out the data that I don't want because I only want the news whose ID is passed in the URL. So I need a WHERE clause to specify that the news ID field needs to be equal to the URL.newsID parameter. And so this is a confusion variable. So here we have a dynamic query once again. So confusion will evaluate that part of the SQL statement, will change it by the value of the news ID parameter that is sent in the URL from the master page and will generate that query dynamically. Now let's test the query with a CF dump and the variable that I want to dump in this case, of course, is the RS single news. Let's copy and paste it. All right, I save the page and I run it in the browser. So here you see there is no parameter in the URL. So the main page, the master page of the drill down is displayed. We have the table with all the news. If I click on one of those read more links, then I have the query and you see the query takes the content, the creation date and the news title from the news table. And then I have the user first name and the user last name from the users table. Also, if I scroll down, this is the SQL statement that has been sent to the database and you see that news ID here equal one. One is the result of confusion evaluating that variable, that URL.newsID and make it equal to the data passed in the URL. Okay, so let's return to Confusion Builder because now that I have the data available, the rest is very simple. So let's remove that dump and replace it by a CF output that I open with a T, that I open and close. There we go. And inside of the CF output, I need a title, so an H1 HTML tag, and in the title, I want to output the RS single news dot news title. I also need a paragraph for the metadata with class equal metadata. And that class has been defined, of course, in the style sheet, in the CSS style sheet of the site. So here I need to write published on then some dynamic data. I will use the date format function once again to output the creation date of the news with the month, day, year mask. And then here by, I will output from the same record set, the first name of the user and then always from the same record set, the last name of the user. Now, on the next line, very easy, I just want to output here the content of the news. All right, let's save that page and let's run it. So here, there is no parameter in the URL. So you see the table, that's the master page of the drill down. If I click on read more, this is the detail page for news ID equal three. You see the title, you see the metadata, and you see here the content of the news. Now to go back to the main page, if you click here on the news button, you will have an error because it still goes to the old news.html. We did not change the links just yet. So just go back here and remove the parameter from the URL. We will take care of the links later in the course. If you click on another read more link, you have another parameter that is sent to the database another query that is performed and another news that is displayed. So this is the detail page of the drill down. Now, one last little thing we have some housekeeping to do because of course, 
all those HTML files here and the news folder is no longer needed. So let's delete those unneeded files because we have replaced it by a drill down and a single page news.cfm here takes care of the master page and the detail page for all the news. So it is time for you to do the very same thing for the agenda section of the site and all the step-by-step -step instructions are written in the file whose name appears now on the screen. Take your time once again to do this exercise and to get used to this procedure. I will meet you in the next video after you have performed this exercise by yourself using the PDF file whose name is now on your screen.